We've been uh, really richly blessed, haven't we, today? We celebrated Mass. We've had the hour of divine mercy. We've listened to some extraordinary testimonies, witnesses of mercy, and we've heard some talks which have inspired and encouraged us. It's a blessed day, isn't it? We've been really blessed, really blessed. In the year 2000, at the World Youth Day, Pope St John Paul II spoke some words to young people that in a way sent almost like a bolt of electricity running amongst them. And they're words that I think have more and more significance as time goes on. And I think, in a way, they're words that have particular significance and importance to us in relation to divine mercy. The Pope said, young people of every continent, do not be afraid to be the saints of the new millennium. I'd like to echo this wonderful saint. We, St John Paul had great love of divine mercy and no doubt the whole experience of divine mercy was something that profoundly affected his own spiritual vision and spiritual understanding. And these words which were addressed to young people of the World Youth Day, the year 2000, as a new millennium was opening up, were words I believe we too can receive today at this conference and receive as words that can be also in a very particular way addressed to us. I'll just remove the word young, although I'm sure we're all young, but... People of every continent, do not be afraid to be the saints of the new millennium. It's something that grabs you, doesn't it? Seizes your heart. And you realise that is what we are being called to be. We're called to be saints. And extraordinarily, that word has touched and inspired the lives, certainly of young people I know. Many young people, I still, still hear them saying, I want to be a saint. Because somehow when the Pope said that, those words to young people, they realised, yes, it's possible. I can be a saint. What they realised, and I think it was born of the Pope's great confidence in them as young people, that holiness, that sanctity, was within the grasp of everyone. It, it made the idea of being holy not something somehow distant or just for a few, but it was something available to each of us. Do you want to be saints? Do you feel a call to be saints? Yes. Can you be saints? Yes. Can you be saints? Yes. 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 And that's what the Pope believed about young people. And it's what we can believe about ourselves. The Pope said to the young people on that occasion, the Lord wants you to be intrepid apostles of his gospels and the builders of a new humanity. 
because that's what saints do. Saints become living witnesses of the gospel. It's not just their words, but it's who they've become. They become examples, exemplars of what it means to live as a true disciple of Jesus Christ. They embody, in flesh, incarnate the gospel. And people see the gospel lived out in their midst. And this is what will create a new humanity. You know, it's saints that change history. It is saints that make history. It is saints that shape and form societies. In 2002, the next World Youth Day, the Pope continued this theme with the young people. And you could sense that he had extraordinary confidence in them. He could say these words because he knew they could hear it, they could receive it, and they were excited by it. And so he told them to be holy, and not to live simply in the spirit of the age. And he said to be holy just simply means to be living in the Holy Spirit. Because it is the Holy Spirit that makes us holy. It's the indwelling spirit that transforms us. It's the grace of the Holy Spirit that, that allows the fruits of the spirit to be manifest in our lives. It is a spirit living within us that impels us to live our faith, to witness to our faith, to be instruments of love, to be instruments of mercy. It's, it's all the Holy Spirit. And so the Pope knew that saints could be raised up for the new millennium because in the end it would be the work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of people who are willing to receive the Holy Spirit into them. This word, this call to young people was again echoed now by a new Pope, Pope Benedict at Cologne. And he's speaking about reforming society and he said, again, the saints are the true reformers. He says, only from saints, only from God does true revolution come the definitive way to change the world. It is saints who change the world. Once again, in presenting the idea of holiness, of the call to be saints, what the Pope is saying is this will actually transform the world. This will actually transform society. It's a powerful thought, a deep truth, a great reality. Holiness changes the world. And now on the feast of St. Joseph, March the 19th this year, Pope Francis continued in this theme of the Pope's speaking about holiness and the capacity for each of us to be holy, each of us to be saints. And so he produced the apostolic exhortation, which I'm sure you're familiar with, exulte et gaudete, rejoice and be glad. And the whole theme was on saints, and he again reminded us, reminded the Catholic world that God wants all of us to be saints, all of us to be holy. And he challenges us and he says, do not allow yourself to settle for a bland and mediocre existence as a Christian. He challenges us not to settle 
for second best. He presents in the Apostolic Exhortation a very attractive idea. In one section, he entitles it Saints Next Door and invites us to look around, to look around us and see the saints who are actually close to us and near to us. Today we've had witness. Emmanuel was a saint, wasn't he? Extraordinary saint. There are saints all around us. We heard Father Dennis, a saint. This is holiness. This is not distant. This is not in some far place away from where I live, where I am, among my, away from my own experience. Sanctity is around us. Sanctity lives in our midst. Sanctity is there if we look and see and recognise it. How often have we actually said, that man's a saint or that woman's a saint? We've said that, don't we? we it's one of the words we say. Because we see holiness in them. We see something of the reality of God's grace that animates their life in a way that, ins that inspires us, that stirs us. Saints are next door. Closer than we realise. Because sanctity lives in the church. Sanctity lives in the lives of Christians that we come into contact with. It's not something so distant and so unattainable that we don't consider it something which belongs in the very life in which we live. And so that's why the Pope can go on and say, do not be afraid of holiness, he says, because it will take away none of your energy or vitality or joy and he says, on the contrary, you will become what the Father had in mind when he created you. You were created to be a saint because you were created with the intention of sharing eternal beatitude in heaven. We're on a journey to paradise. And that's what the Father wants us to be. He wants us to realise our full reality as human beings and through baptism, sons and daughters of God. If you like, the Father now looks at each of us, looks into our hearts and into our lives and all he longs for is to see holiness rise and rise and rise within us. And again, the Pope identifies the means of holiness. And he says, do not be afraid to let yourself be guided by the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that will make us saints. The Holy Spirit will make us holy. So in a way, the more and more we give space to the Holy Spirit to move in us, we hear the promptings of the Spirit. We respond to the, to the direction of the Spirit. The more we allow the Holy Spirit to move in our hearts and lives, the more in prayer that we are attentive to, the, to, to seeking the guidance and presence and activity of the Holy Spirit, the more and more we open our lives and allow the Holy Spirit to breathe within, within us, to breathe God's life into us, the more we allow the Holy Spirit to inspire our actions, our words, all we do, this is how we will be growing in holiness. It will be the spirit that raises up holiness in our lives. It's very interesting, this section of the uh, apostolic exhortation. Uh, the Pope quotes the French spiritual writer, Leon Bloy, who made this really interesting comment. He says, the only great tragedy in life is not to become a saint. Isn't that true? The only tragedy that come upon any human being is not to be a saint. 
Being a saint is our default position. Being a saint is our destiny. Being a saint is what God, through the power of his Holy Spirit, wants to realise in our lives. Now, the Pope then goes on and said, now look, I know this is going to be a battle. We heard already about the devil and all the ways that we can be tempted, we can be lured away, we can, be, we can find this sense of despondency or fear or anxiety or uncertainty, all the ways that darkness can come upon us, all the ways that we can struggle and find it difficult to be able to respond to the Lord. So the Pope says, look, it is a battle, yes. But surely it's a battle worth engaging in and not bowing out of. Let's engage in that battle. Let's engage in that spiritual struggle. Because he says, those who do not realise this will, be, will pr be prey to failure or mediocrity. Look, face the fact, there is a battle. But let's engage in the battle. Let's not feel that because it's a battle, it's going to be too hard and too difficult for us. Because God's power is greater than the power of evil. Light dispels the darkness. God's power is greater. And God's victory is what is available to us. So we engage in the battle, not in fear, but with confidence. So this is the call that we find our popes have been saying to us, we of the third millennium, we Christians of the third millennium. And I believe there is no greater and more important task for us as Christians in the third millennium than to be holy, than to be saints. Of all the other things we can do, of all the programs and things that we can become engaged in, I believe for the church, right now for the church, there is nothing more important than each of us become a saint and live as a saint and not allow ourselves to slide into any form of mediocrity. Pope Francis says, look, you can count on the powerful weapons that the Lord has given us. And these are the ones that he mentions. So if we're going to involve in this battle, there, there are going to be some things that we can rely upon to help us in this battle. And these are the things he says. Faith-filled prayer. Faith-filled prayer. Prayer animated by faith. Prayer that flows from the heart. Prayer that we find ourselves engaged in strongly as we have today. Meditation on God's word. I often say that today so many people who would consider themselves Christians may have a heart that desires to be Christian, but their minds have been shaped and formed by the world. We need the word of God to speak truth into our minds, to have that wisdom and knowledge that can only come from the word of God. And he mentions the celebration of Mass, drawn into the mystery of Christ, drawn into the commemoration of the sacrifice of Christ, uniting ourselves with Christ's death and resurrection and being brought into a holy communion with Christ, a holy communion with Christ when we receive holy communion. And then he mentions the Eucharistic adoration, as we've just done for the last hour, coming before the Lord in silence and attention knowing that the Lord is truly present, knowing that he's there waiting for us, longing for us, wanting to engage with us, the silent presence of the Lord in our midst, and we can open our hearts and be drawn into a deeper union with him through its silent adoration. And then the Pope Benson sacram sacramental reconciliation 
And again, that's been emphasised. The whole message of divine mercy focuses on receiving mercy through the sacrament of reconciliation. We cannot grow unless we are engaged with that sacrament. Then he goes on to mention works of charity, that, that, that our life will flow. As we know the love of God, we cannot but give that love to others. So charity becomes the animation of all our actions and all that is the desire of our heart. He goes on to mention community life, that we live with, in union with our brothers and sisters. And finally, he mentions missionary outreach. So the Pope is saying there are basic elements that constitute the Christian life in such a way that this life becomes a holy life and in such a way that this becomes the means, these become the means by which we're able to engage in the spiritual battle successfully and advance and not allow the darkness to overwhelm us. He ends his encyclical by saying, it is my hope that these pages will prove helpful by enabling the whole church to devote herself anew to promoting the desire for holiness. So let us ask the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us a fervent longing to be saints for God's greater glory and let us encourage one another in this effort. In this way, we will share a happiness that the world will not be able to take from us. So the Pope is hoping that, that these words of his will inspire us to seek and desire holiness. I, said, I believe that these words that have come down to us now since the beginning of this third millennium, the call of the, the, the popes, something the Lord has placed on the hearts of the popes, to say that holiness is the path for each one of us. Now, in, um, in the diaries of St. Faustina, she makes this interesting comment. She says, uh, oh, my Jesus, how very easy it is to become holy. Now, you might think, well, that's St. Faustina because she was holy anyway, so it wasn't hard for her. She was a nun. She had all the opportunities. The Lord was revealing himself to her, and so you think she had everything going her way. Well, we know there were struggles, but she's also saying something very true. It's easy to become holy too. Because she goes on and says, all that is needed Extraordinarily, all that is needed is a little goodwill. All that's needed. In other words, all you need to do to be holy is want to be holy. Say, I want to give it a go. I want to be holy. So we don't have to see it again as something impossible or something beyond us. St. Faustina is saying, all that's needed is a little bit, little bit of goodwill. She's speaking here of a very important spiritual principle and that is spiritual advancement comes from the desire of the heart. The key thing for us is to look into our hearts and if we can see there a desire to be holy, if we can see there a desire to be a saint, that's the beginning of you becoming a saint. You become a saint simply because you want to become a saint. You desire to become a saint. And the Lord will help us to become holy. St. Falcina records, if Jesus sees this little bit of goodwill in the soul, he hurries to give himself to the soul and nothing can stop him. Neither shortcomings nor fall, absolutely nothing. Now I reckon St. Faustina was speaking very much out of her own experience when she says this. She sees that's what's happened with her. She may be at different times in various ways of just 
expressed her own desire to be holy and she's seen the Lord come. She's sensed the grace of God move. She's, she's realised this, Jesus is going to back me in this. Jesus is going to help me in this. He's only now able to do it because that's what I want. And so he's going to hurry, she says, to help, to support, to enable this to take place. She adds... Jesus is anxious to help that soul. Can you picture that for a moment? You want to be holy. And the Lord runs to your side. I'm going to help you. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to enable you to realise this because this is what I want for you and you have put yourself in a place where I can help you, where I can come to your assistance. She says, St. Faustina says, God is very generous and does not deny his grace to anyone. So let us simply desire to be saints. And maybe it's a good thing to take to prayer at Mass or before the Blessed Sacrament or at a time when you're praying. Say to the Lord, Lord, I want to be a saint. I want to be holy. I want to go to heaven. And now I want to live as a saint on earth. I want to move in the path of holiness. To actually say that. To express that desire. Because then the Lord can receive that desire and rush to your side and enable you to become that saint. I'll finish with some words again from St. Faustina. Neither graces, she says, nor revelations nor raptures, nor, grif, nor gifts granted to a soul make it perfect, but rather the intimate union of the soul with God. It's not the gifts, the graces, the raptures, the extraordinary spiritual experiences. It's the intimate union of the soul with God. She says these gifts are merely ornaments of the soul, but constitute neither its essence nor its perfection. My sanctity and perfection consist in the close union of my will with the will of God. So my brothers and sisters, we celebrate divine mercy through this, this Congress. Let us simply desire to be saints, to be holy. And all we need to do is open ourselves to the will of God and plan of God for us. And God will make us holy. God's spirit will raise us up in holiness. And the church will have many, many saints in the new millennium. Amen.